What is going on guys? It's your boy Z85 Jew. We are back here with another video. And today, this video is actually about our Nismo 370Z. And I wanna give you guys an update. I know I have been working on the Nismo 350Z for a long time now. A lot of the videos have been about that car, but today we need to go ahead and get this car sorted. And I wanna give you guys somewhat of an update of uh, why this thing is still in the air and why it is not running. What's going on guys, your boy Z85Jew here interrupting today's video and I want to talk to you guys really quick about the wheel situation of my RPF1s. So you guys know that that wheel is bent and I was reaching out to the seller of the wheels to see if you know we can maybe come to an agreement or just something, right? Just something. So I reached out to him after I posted that video and he actually reached back out which I was super surprised. He reached back out after I told him, hey man, the wheel's bent, you know, I didn't know that, you didn't tell me, blah, 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 like what's going on? So he told me, hey bro, like I, I buy and sell wheels for a living. I was unaware that these wheels were bent because I bought them and just immediately posted them for sale. So I gave him the benefit of the doubt and I told him, oh, that's completely fine, you know, is there anything that we can do? I'm not asking to like return the wheels, but is there anything that we can do? You know, maybe shoot me some money back, maybe you buy a new wheel, something like that, you know, it just makes things right, right? So he told me, yes, you have two options. He said the first option I can drive all the way back up to where we ended up meeting, which was about five, maybe not five, maybe three, three to four hours away from me. And uh, he can fully refund me for the wheels and I give them back. Or the second option was I can keep the wheels and he would just pay for a replacement wheel. So I thought about it and I chose to keep the wheels and I would want him to re replace that one wheel. Just because I do like the wheels, I think that it could complement both of my cars, whether I have it on the 350Z Nismo or my 370Z Nismo. I just think that it could definitely be a good addition to my wheel collection, if you will. So I chose that. He told me that he was going to Mexico for his birthday and he said that if he doesn't respond, he's not ignoring me it's just that he he's not gonna have a lot of service because of the part of Mexico he's going to so I told him that's completely fine bro I was like we can honestly wait until you get back whatever he told me to go ahead and get the quote from the shop and then send it to him so I got the quote from the shop you guys saw that I went to the shop and they, they uh, tested the wheel all of that stuff and they confirmed that the wheel is bent and it is not repairable so I sent him that information I sent them the shops information and I said hey man you can either shoot me the money and I can go buy the wheel or if you don't think that I'm gonna buy a new wheel, you can uh, either pay the shop that I'm gonna get that done at and they can do it for me, you know what I mean? He read it and then after that, he instantly blocked me. I, uh, I didn't have access to the post again as far as like, you know, when you sell something on Facebook, but you can still see that it's marked sold and you can go and look at, you know, the post still. I didn't have access to that anymore and then also I didn't have access to his page, his personal page. When I would go there, it would tell me like this user is not found or something along the lines of that on Facebook. So um, kind of what I expected, I didn't think that it would go that far to where he's like, yeah, like I'll pay for it and then block me. I just thought he was instantly gonna block me. So uh, it kind of sucks, but at the end of the day, it is what it is, you know. Luckily, I'm in a position where I don't really need the wheels like urgently right now. You know, I'm driving on a set of wheels right now in the 350Z Nismo. So it's not that big a deal. It's just more of the fact that uh, him just not keeping his word and, uh, and doing good business, man. If that's what he does and stuff, buying and sells wheels, if something happens, man, I mean, you know, you, you got to looks like I ran out of space guys so I'm gonna make this really quick because my battery is dead but uh, again I'm in a good position I'm fine now so I'm gonna try to get these wheels fixed from maybe another shop if not then worst case scenario I'll just buy another wheel but I just wanted to give you guys an update because I actually didn't do that in the previous video so I apologize for that with all that being said I hope you guys enjoy the rest of this video and are having a great rest of the day see you guys soon so first off Everything is done. As I mentioned, we have fuel, wiring is done. The car can turn on as far as like accessories. I haven't tried to start it yet, but everything does turn on and function how it should. The only thing that we're running into is our crank pulley, our damper. So if you guys look down there, let me see if I can get you guys a better angle. That is our crank damper. I have shown this in many previous videos before, but if you look, it's actually not aligned with our other pulleys. Um, it's a bit further further out. Let me see if I can find you a better angle here. So if you're looking straight down at that thing, it's basically a little bit further out. I know it's really, really hard to tell. When I have a belt on there and I spin the crank, 
it actually they call it belt walk it actually walks the belt off of the engine so imagine if i were to turn the car on it's just going to pull the belt off it's going to do that every single time so right now i am currently running the ati super damper you guys have probably maybe seen the box it looks a little bit like this so this is what I'm running right now. It is a great damper. I know it works really, really well, but I think what happened is the company I bought this from, because I bought it brand new, I think they sent me the wrong one. So unfortunately, the damper is actually probably for another car, or another engine, whatever it is, probably in 7M or whatever. So it's not seating all the way back. So what I decided to do, I didn't want to go back to OEM because the whole reason why you want to run an upgraded damper is because a lot of these OEM dampers, they have rubber in them. And and when you're making higher horsepower on your engine, the rubber can actually disintegrate itself and then just spin off. And obviously that's super catastrophic for an engine, especially like how much you put into an engine, you know, time, money. What I decided to do, I didn't want to go back OEM. I ended up buying something they called a fluid damper. And what this one is, this one is actually supposed to have the OEM style kind of like characteristics, but still be more durable to like handle horsepower. So let me pull this thing out here. So this is what this one looks like. You guys have, might have seen something like this before, but um, essentially it is an OEM damper. And actually for reference, I do have the OEM damper in here and you can actually get a general idea of what it looks like. So that is the OEM damper. There's actually rubber all along in here. Let's see if I can just pull this thing out as well. There's rubber all along over here right so when you're making higher horsepower this thing can technically rotate off of the rubber especially these things are super old I, this is a damper the original damper that the 2jz came with so again i went with this one it is oem style so it will have the characteristics of this one but the only thing that this doesn't have is rubber so it's supposed to be metal it's a lot more durable material and people make a lot of horsepower on these the only other thing i would say about the ati again i think it is a great product i mean i i haven't ran it so i don't really know even though i do have it they say these things are really really tight so when you're putting it on your crank hub this is a very very small diameter it's not actually the same diameter as this it's actually barely smaller you can't tell with your eye but i'm sure if you measured it it would be smaller and what they want you to do to in order to put this on and what i had to do you actually have to heat this thing up you either heat the dampener up and then you put it on you know obviously with some gloves or you can bake it same thing i guess heating it up you can put a torch to it something like that you just want to heat it up so it expands and then you're able to slide it on and then tighten it down but if you were to just do, do it cold like this, if I were to just slide this one on, this one would go on because this one, again, it has the OEM characteristics of this one. That's one thing that a lot of people don't like about that. Also, since it is so tight, once you put it on, once you get it onto your hub, since it's so tight on there, you can actually put a lot of stress on your bottom end as far as like the bearings, the crank, all of that kind of stuff. So this one long-term for me, I don't think would have worked out just because I don't have a built engine. I'm not running anything super crazy as far as like the engine itself just mainly exterior mods simple bolt-ons really just a bigger turbo different intake manifold fueling and an ECU I don't really have a I don't have a built engine I don't have pistons I don't have rods I don't have any of that so I don't want to put excessive wear and tear on my bottom end knowing that I don't have that so I think honestly I should have went with this to begin with but honestly I, I didn't know I didn't know that this was a thing I, I always would see people just go straight to these and um, yeah I kind of see why they are choosing not to now so yeah for you guys i would for sure recommend this in today's video we're actually going to be trying to take off this damper and the reason why i say trying is because you guys know that my front end is now on this car and how my radiator is and everything like that i actually can't get to my crank bolt unless i'm at the bottom of the car so it's just really really hard i don't have much space to work with so my boy is actually pulling up which he is right here and uh, he's going to be helping us out so let's see if we can get this stock, not stock, the ATI damper off and then put the other one on. Damn. So as you guys just saw, I had very limited room to work with as far as getting that crank pulley off. So unfortunately for me, I have to take my entire front end off. So in these next few clips, you guys will see that I'm disassembling the front end, taking the bumper off, taking the radiator off, taking the core support out, taking all that stuff off, draining the coolant. Um, pretty unfortunate for me just because, you know, this is not something I wanted to do because the car was quote unquote done but it is what it is. So I hope you guys enjoyed these next few clips and 
yeah, lucky me. I know this is not what you guys wanted to see, nor what do I want to see, but I want to explain why I am doing all of this. So the reason why I took my front end off is because my crank pulley, which is the one, this one right here, the one that I had on the engine, the ATI Super Damper, I was running this one, but it wasn't sitting all the way flush with the rest of the pulleys. So when I would have a belt on there and I would turn the crank, it would actually pull off the belt every time. And I just could not figure out why. I'm like, I have this thing all the way down. I don't know why it keeps coming off. So ended up pulling it off. And upon further inspection, when you have this thing sideways, you guys see how much material is right here, right? So this is the OEM one for reference. So if I line this thing up, obviously it's not perfect aligned, but whatever. So the point is you see how little material that one has as opposed to that one. So you can just see the difference between the two. This one is almost double of this one. So that kind of tells me what was wrong. So this one in particular is the wrong ATI damper. The pulley is fine. It's just that this this part in the middle, because for this thing, this, this can actually come out of the damper itself. This part is wrong. It's way too long. So I don't know whoever I got this from. I bought it new, I bought it from a company, but I, be I believe that this part number is actually wrong and it's not for a 2DayZ. I think it's for like a 7M, which is also, they come in like a Toyota Supra and stuff like that. So that's what I'm thinking. So all in all, I went ahead and bought the, I guess their, <laughs> It's Arch Nemesis, which is called a fluid damper. So this one is pretty much just like OEM, except for it doesn't utilize that rubber that the OEM one uses. So this one is pretty much the same thing. It just does not have the rubber in there. And if I turn this one to the side, you can see that this one has a very small bite as well. So this one is the same as the OEM. So I know this one will work for sure, but it sucks because both of these pieces were very, very expensive. This one was $600. This one was $600, that's $1,200 right here, just in pulleys. And uh, it's really annoying just because, you know, the, the car was complete. You guys saw and know that the car was complete. I had my radiator support, core support, all that stuff on, and I had to take everything out as well as drain all of that coolant that I had just put in the car just to be able to do this. So it's super annoying. You guys can see how frustrated that is. And honestly, I just want to say this, you know, recently, the last couple months for myself, it has not been the best, you know, starting off with getting the drive shaft for the 370Z. I got the drive shaft, it fit the correct, it was the correct length, but the flange on the back was wrong. I had to drive that thing back up, drop it off, get the correct flange, go pick it up, bring it back home, then install it. Next thing is probably the wheels. Ended up buying these wheels for this car and all the wheels are fine except for one of them. One of them was bent. Now, the crank pulley on this thing, obviously wasn't seated all the way wrong. It was it was uh, all the way back. It was the actual, the wrong pulley. So like, there's just been a lot of things going wrong for me the last couple months. And I just wanna leave you guys with this, man. No matter what happens, you gotta keep going. You cannot let this stuff discourage you because don't get me wrong, bro. This car, you know, it was done. It was, it was really complete. It was ready to get tuned and all that. And we took a really big setback by, you know, pulling this thing fully apart. Now I have to reassemble everything, make sure everything is tight and everything was set and done. But again, you know, you just cannot get discouraged. You gotta keep fighting, you gotta keep moving forward. But as cliche and as weird as that might sound, right? You really gotta keep going. And um, yo, especially I even forgot about this one. You know, we got coilovers for this car. You guys saw that video, but they ended up riding really bad. So I took them off. So I installed the coilovers on a Monday, drove them from one day on Tuesday, and then I took them off on Wednesday. And now I'm on stock suspension and I'm waiting on my new coilovers to get here to do that a third time. So again, like no matter what happens, man, you really gotta just keep fighting and keep going. I hope 
that this video can just really be motivation for some people out there and like whatever they're going through in life, whether it be with cars, financially, whatever it is, man, do not get down. Don't let that stuff bring you down, man. You got to find ways to bring you up. You got to have people around you to bring you up. And you just got to know that there is better for yourself. You will have months like this. And trust me, I'm going through it for these past couple months. It has been crazy for me, car wise and just financially, everything like that. It's been very hard. I find myself every day, you know, jotting down notes and like just writing things down that I know that I'm going to get better. And I know that things are going to get better. Better. so you just have to have that mindset but with all that being said let's go ahead and get the right crank pulley on there for the final time and let's go ahead and reassemble all this stuff so this car can get tuned man because I, I couldn't start this car and I hope you guys don't think that I was trying to clickbait you I wasn't trying to clickbait you of like getting it started whatever this car is done fuel is done everything is done except for this this is the last piece so now I'm hoping once we get this thing on there everything is gonna be situated we can go ahead and turn on this car hear it run for the first time and yeah we'll go from there but again I hope that was just some motivational stuff I'm not you know I'm not this big influencer I don't want you guys to be looking at me like that I'm just a normal guy trying to make it out here on YouTube doing car stuff and just doing what I love to do every day and I'm just kind of vlogging and posting my daily experiences what I go through this is real stuff man these wheels are legit real life bent that is not a joke, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of stuff that's really going on that uh, that just happens, you know? And we gotta just find ways to pick not only ourselves up, but just other people. So I hope that can leave a good message and just touch a few of you guys in this video. Other than that, I'm gonna go ahead and get started, man.